Virtually everyone knows that vitamin C is good for us, right? After all, it's been proven to help with aging, inflammation, chronic disease. And given we're one of the only animals on the planet that can't make it ourselves, surely taking supplements must be a good thing, right? Well, a whole lot of us certainly think so. And that's why the vitamin C industry on its own is worth $2 billion today. But there is one man I need to tell you about who has made vitamin C what it is today. He's undoubtedly one of the greatest scientific minds the world has ever seen. He's the only person ever to have won two unshared Nobel Prizes. And by sharing his story with you today, you'll see how controversial he was. You'll see how he helped vitamin C become the superstar that it is today. And how it all really makes sense. But you might take away a deeper message, something that I took away that has nothing to do with vitamin C. And this is all thanks to one man. That man is Linus Pauling. Herman Pauling was a drug salesman by trade, and he was father to Linus. Linus was born in 1901 in Portland, Oregon. And it was clear to Herman from a young age that Linus was special. It was clear how immensely proud Herman was of Linus, based on the following ad that he took out in the local paper that said, I have a son who is eight years old. He is my pride and joy. He has already won a prize for an essay on the subject of what makes the best man. But one year later, when Linus was nine, his father died from a perforated stomach ulcer. Linus was devastated. His family was broke. And his mother didn't have the same interest in what Linus could achieve. But Linus was relentless. He worked two jobs as a child, mopping floors and delivering milk overnight to help with the family finances. All the while taking every opportunity to learn everything he could about chemistry, even building his own chemistry set and devouring every scientific book he could find. At 18, he was teaching students his own age. At 20, he had a degree. At 24, a PhD. And by the age of 30, he published a paper on atomic bonds that Einstein famously said, It was too complicated for me. Pauling was unstoppable. And he kept going. He published a book on the nature of the chemical bond that to this day is still known as the Bible of Chemistry. This led to the Nobel Prize for Science. Eight years later, He's back again for a second Nobel Prize, this time for peace after helping put an end to nuclear weapon testing. Everybody thought he could do no wrong. Maybe even himself. But he was human. After only a few months of studying DNA, he boldly claimed that it was a triple helix, later proved wrong by Watson and Crick. He was also off about mutations in sickle cell disease. But it was his meeting with Erwin Stone in New York in 1966 that would change vitamin C forever. At a speech, Pauling casually said that he'd like to live longer and see where science took us next. Stone, who was a biochemist working mainly with preventing food spoilage, approached Linus and told him about vitamin C. He said that he believed vitamin C could make us live longer. Well, Pauling was intrigued. And he decided to try it out for himself. So he took more and more vitamin C, eventually taking 180 times the recommended daily dose. But Pauling felt great. He was livelier than he had ever been. He was having no more colds. So he decided to go all in on vitamin C. And so began the mega vitamin revolution. It started with the claim that vitamin C could prevent and treat the common cold. And he wrote a book on the topic which clearly reverberated across the United States of America because it led to one in four Americans taking up to 400 times the recommended daily dose of vitamin C on a daily basis. And then came more claims about its benefits. Heart disease, stroke, mental illness, polio, TB, meningitis, radiation poisoning, rabies, and more. All claims noticeably lacking in robust, strong evidence. But hey, just because you don't have evidence that it works, doesn't mean it doesn't work. But then Pauling went one step further, when he brought cancer into the equation. Age 70, Linus Pauling claimed that high-dose vitamin C could reduce cancer rates by 10%. He later went on to correct this and say that the figure was more likely to be 75%. And the public listened. 
Of course, why wouldn't they? After all, this was Linus Pauling. But when people started to use vitamin C instead of chemotherapy to treat their cancer, well, the medical world had to listen too. Could this be true? Trials were conducted and results were clear. Vitamin C did not cure cancer. This infuriated Pauling. With funding from the pharmaceutical giant Hoffman La Roche, he built his own institute, the Linus Pauling Institute, gathered some of the brightest minds to conduct his own experiments, hoping and aiming to get proof that vitamin C was as good as he said it was. But then, the unexpected happened. Rather than proving vitamin C was a treatment for cancer, studies in rats confirmed that high-dose vitamin C could actually cause cancer. Hoffman La Roche removed their funding, but until his death, Linus Pauling remained convinced and a strong advocate for high-dose vitamin C therapy. So was Pauling wrong about vitamin C? Well, yes and no. Vitamin C is important. Think of the British sailors going across the ocean, getting that scurvy and sucking on their lemons. Clearly, it's an important vitamin for us to have. But what if we take more than we need? Well, in theory, it actually makes sense if you know about free radicals. Consider free radicals like little electrical sparks that happen naturally when cells divide and burn through energy. But they also happen when we're exposed to pollution, radiation, or even smoke. And these little sparks can trigger a chain reaction of almost a, a wildfire destroying everything in its path, contributing to things like aging, chronic disease, heart issues, and even cancer. And all that is true. Consider vitamin C the opposite, the thing that turns off these sparks. So no sparks, no chain reaction, no wildfire, no damage leading to all these problems. Sounds good. But wait, are we okay with no sparks at all? And this is where the problem is. Those sparks, those free radicals, actually have a purpose. They are useful for killing bugs, for causing little bits of inflammation that's actually important for our immune system. And get this killing cells that might be about to turn into a cancer. And who knows, maybe Linus Pauling didn't consider this. Look, the surface lesson here is vitamin C is great, but too much of a good thing is usually a bad thing. But there's another lesson slightly deeper here that I've taken away. We're all human, even the genius that was Linus Pauling, whose stubbornness overshadowed his brilliance. But here's the thing. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to change our minds, but it takes courage to do it. I'll endeavor to try and stay open-minded, and I hope you will too. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.